Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad, a plastic surgery resident in the US and in this video I will share with you tips that will help you pass the step 1 in 2025 if you're in a hurry and I'll also share with you a detailed study plan and schedule on how to pass the exam in just two months the first tip that will help you pass the step one exam from the first time if you're in a hurry is picking the right resources and since now step one is just pass fail you don't need to worry about scoring high you just need to pass and for that one question bank is more than enough there are multiple question banks out there but the two most popular ones are uwog and amboss for step one especially if you're in a hurry i don't recommend doing both i would recommend only doing one if you have to pick one between the two i would recommend going with uwog now it's not only about picking the right resource but about studying it right and I have a detailed video on how to best study you all for step one and I'll leave the link for that in the cards above and in the description below but in summary I recommend you study you world in a timed mode so as if you're doing an exam and study it system wise because when you study it in timed mode you simulate the exam so every day you're doing one to two blocks of an actual exam style so when the exam day comes in it's like walk in the park you've already done that hundreds of times and the reason why I like studying it in a system wise is because now you're in the studying phase so it helps if you study something about heart failure and then compare it with another question about heart failure and a question about arrhythmia rather than answering one question about GI, one about endo, one about cardio, studying the system wise in my opinion would help you consolidate the information more than studying random. But of course there is value in studying random questions and I'll touch base on that when I talk about self-assessment exams. But when you're in the studying mode, I recommend you study system wise and also make sure to take notes from your world. And some people will freak out because they're studying from a question bank, they're answering everything wrong, they don't know the answers but that's fine don't worry about how many questions you're getting wrong what matters here is not the percentage of the questions that you're answering correctly what matters is how much you're learning from these explanations and with time you will see that the percentage of questions you're answering correctly go up with time now another great resource i recommend to supplement your question bank studying is the high yield files from the match guide these are a list of high yield topics that are commonly tested on the exam prepared ready to use for you and they're divided by subject so you might want to study the high yield file of that subject before you go into your world or the other way around so you study your world and then you go and do a quick review by studying these high yield concepts and these files are also gold for the last few days of your preparation and the best thing is these files are fully free for you to use and you can download them by clicking on the link that I'll leave in the description below some might ask well what about first aid if you're in a hurry first aid is a resource you might not need for your preparation especially that step one is pass fail I believe the combination of studying a question bank very well along with the high yield files should be enough for you to pass the exam but again focus on studying these resources as well don't overwhelm yourself with the number of resources just focus on one or two and study them well the second tip when it comes to passing the step one if you're in a hurry is doing self-assessments early on and the reason is you can start gauging your progress and self-assessment exams you can do are the ones by the mbme you all self-assessments the free sample by the mbme and by the way we have detailed explanation to the answers of this sample that you can access fully for free by clicking on the link that i'll leave in the description below in addition to to a self-assessment exam that the match guy is developing for step one aspirants and i'll leave the link for that as well in the description below so you can do around six to eight assessment exams start with one at the beginning of your study if you have some background about the topics of step one if you don't have any background maybe do it after the first round of your world and then do one every other week until the last week of your preparation where you can do one to two but make sure you take advantage of these self-assessment exams don't just solve them and go on with your life it's very important to analyze the mistakes where are you making these mistakes is there a specific subjects you have deficiency in is there a reason why you're answering certain questions wrong is it lack of knowledge is it a problem in analyzing the content of the questions is it missing certain keywords because the solutions for these will vary based on the problem and you want to identify these problems early on so you can fix them during your preparation i think it's a big mistake to start doing mbmes a week or two before your exam because it's too late there is not much time to fix the problems and another mistake is to use all of them at the beginning of your preparation and you're left with nothing at the end so just be wise in using these very valuable resources that can assess your progress and if you see that you're way above the percentage to pass the exam you might not need to study more and more but before you go to the exam make sure you're slightly above the passing rate because it's a range it's not going to predict exactly how much your score it's going to give you a range so you want to make sure that the full range is above the passing score the third tip when it comes to passing step one when you're in a hurry is identifying how many hours a day do you have to study because not everyone has the luxury of having full dedicated time to study for the step one so 
identifying how many hours a day can you study, how many days a week. And if you are in the full dedicated mode, you actually have that luxury of studying full day. I highly recommend you go to 10 and even 12 hours a day of studying. And I have a detailed video on how you can build that study plan and how you can study 12 hours a day. But I'll leave the link for that in the description below. But remember, the exam is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So if you're someone who's always been studying three hours a day, it's not going to be possible to jump to 12 hours a day. So maybe in the first few days, increase it to five or six. Then you increase one hour a day until you reach the 10 to 12. And it's very doable. Trust me, it's not impossible. You can still do at least four to five hours of break and study 12 hours a day. You just have to be a master of time management and efficiency. Because you can imagine if someone is studying 12 hours a day and they have two months for the exam, they probably have more studying time overall than someone who has six months to study for the exam, but they have one to two hours a day because they have a job you know, that they're working for. Also, if you're studying over a very long time period with very little studying, there is more time for things to be forgotten. So things that you studied five months ago, you're probably not gonna remember it on the exam day. And the fourth tip when it comes to passing the step one when you're in a hurry, and this one might be the most important one, which is studying smart. Because I'm sure you heard stories of students who study for 12 hours, but one achieves much more than the other. What's the secret here? The first one is minimizing distractions. These days, the biggest enemy for you achieving a high score or passing your exam when you're in a hurry is your phone, social media, and the internet. And what makes things more challenging is that you need the internet when you're studying to search for a picture, to use ChatGPT to explain a topic to you, uh, access a video or some files on your computer, and these notifications pop in your face and, you know, they distract you. The solution to that is to stop using your phone for your studying because the phone has so many distractions so many apps that might distract you from your studying so put your phone aside don't put it in your pocket on the desk somewhere close put it somewhere that you have to go physically to another room to get it that will make it less likely for you to do that and make your studying fully on your computer or laptop delete all social media apps from your laptop so you're never distracted by that turn off all notifications so you don't get distracted by an email that can wait you know an hour or two to be responded to have a very detailed plan for your study breaks or what people call the pomodoro technique so you study 30 minutes you give yourself five minutes of break you, get, you go again for another 30 minutes five minutes or maybe 50 minutes of studying 10 minutes of break whatever works for you but as long as you have a very detailed plan of when you're studying when you're taking breaks how long this break is and that you come back immediately to studying and put alarms because if you start watching tv or start scrolling on instagram maybe 15 minutes pass by when you wanted to only spend five minutes so if you have an alarm to tell you that the five minutes have passed and now it's time back to get back to studying that will make it more likely for you to do that. And trust me, this requires some practice. It's not going to happen overnight. But with time, you'll see how more disciplined you'll be regarding to studying. And you'll see that these techniques will still incorporate some type of breaks. But instead of unlimited open breaks, you'll have a very structured break system that will ensure that you achieve what you want to do from your day. Another important tip when it comes to studying smart is study techniques. When you're studying the explanation of your world or these high yield files, are you just passing through? Are you just reading? Or you're actually trying? trying to remember the information, trying to guess what the next step is, what the best step in management, what is the pathophysiology diagnosis. So your brain is actively looking for uh, solutions and information rather than just passive reading. Because when you're just reading, that creates the illusion of what we call the illusion of learning. You think you're learning, but in reality, information is coming from here, it's coming out of there because there is no reinforcement of this information. That's why most studies uh, that evaluated memory rotation uh, recommends active learning, where you study the information you try to summarize it yourself when you study it again you actively look for the information trying to know what's coming next rather than you just reading the information another important study hack is space repetition if you study the block of your world don't just go ahead and review it the same day give it some time to be forgotten and when you come back to review it 10 20 30 days later the act of reviewing that the active learning that happens at that time is going to reinforce that information and change it from short term to long term and now if you have any difficulty to understanding concepts you can ask ChatGPT. it can explain topics to you you can watch our youtube videos check out our high yield files i'll leave the link for that in the description below or get a tutor you know tutors are very valuable in saving you time so instead of you spending hours and hours trying to figure out what the right information is or what is higher and what is not the tutor can decrease that time and explain these topics to you which will translate into higher score and much faster preparation period and we have phenomenal tutors that are available to help you the tutoring is 100% satisfaction guarantee, which means if you're not happy, we'll give you your money back, no questions asked. That's how much we trust the value we'll provide to you through our tutoring. Now let's go over a detailed study plan and schedule on how to pass step one in just two months. Now when it comes
comes to building study schedule, the first thing that you need to do is put the resources you want to study and then see how much time you need per each section of that resource. So you can calculate the total number of days required to finish the whole resource. And then you can see how many days total you need to pass the exam. And then you can adjust things based on how you're progressing or if you want to add a resource or remove a resource. So let's start by adding the UALT question bank. The UALT for step one is around 3,600 questions. If you're finishing around 80 questions, per day, which is around two blocks a day, that will translate into 45 days. We'll also incorporate UWorld with the high yield files from the match guy. These will take you around seven days to finish. But of course, you can also incorporate it in your UWorld studying. So after you finish two blocks, you save one hour a day to study these high yield files. We said self-assessment exams are very important and you want to incorporate that in your plan. And we're going to study at least six of them. You can finish around two self-assessment exams a day because they're usually four blocks each. So that means you need three days for that. And I always like to leave review time. So we're going to leave review time of five days so with this plan you'll be done with your step one preparation in two months and some might say well it's too much to finish 80 questions of you all the day and it might be for some students but not others so that's why you need to adjust this plan based on your situation so if you're not able to finish 80 questions a day you only finish in 40 that means you need to extend your study time so the schedule is very flexible based on your exact situation i also want to show you how to build a daily study plan so you can see how you can divide the hours across the day if our goal is to study two blocks of a question bank a day along with one hour of the high yield files that means you need to distribute the time required to solve the questions, study the explanation, and study the higher files across the hours you have every day. Since you're solving the blocks in a timed mode, you only have two hours to solve two blocks. I'm gonna call it here two blocks solving, and I'm gonna put two hours for that. Now we need some time to study the explanation of these blocks. So let's say you take around three hours for 40 questions. So for two blocks, you need a total of six hours and now we want to dedicate one hour to solving the high yield files so we're going to put one hour here so that's a total of nine hours and that's nine hours of studying but who can study nine hours without any breaks so we're going to add breaks here and i'm going to add sleeping here and i'm going to start with sleeping different people have different thresholds of how many hours they need to feel refreshed and focused. I'm gonna put eight hour here, but some people might be able to sleep less. So you can add that to either your studying time or to your breaks time, which will give you around seven hours of breaks. That's a lot of time. You can still use some of that time to study and increase your studying to even 10 and 11 hours. But you can see that these hours, seven hours of breaks, you can use it to eat, exercise, go out. But the key is not excessive breaks. So everything you do, try to do it in moderation so you can keep the balance between you staying motivated to study and still studying enough hours a day. I hope this video provides you with some insights on how to pass step one if you're in a hurry. If you need any help building a study plan, study schedule, explaining topics that are difficult for you to understand, don't hesitate to reach out to our tutors. We'll offer you a free tutoring session so you can see how amazing the session is. And if you're convinced, you can go ahead and sign up for one of our packages. And if you want to learn more about our tutoring, check the link that I'll leave in the description below. And don't forget to grab your high yield files. These will be a game changer for your studying and I would love to hear your feedback about them. If you find any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friend who's also studying for the step one exam to help them ace it as well. Before you go, make sure to check out the video I recorded on how to study UL for step one. You can watch it by clicking here. Thank you everyone so much for watching and good luck on your exam.